You see all the van life photos, you watch all the van tours, but do you wonder what this nomadic lifestyle is all about? Are you curious about life on the road? Social media calls it hashtag van life. We call it home. I'll ask 10 questions to get you the stories that you want to hear from the people who live, work, and travel and adventure in this nomadic lifestyle. Welcome to Life on the Road. Welcome to another episode of Life on the Road, where I ask 10 questions to get you the stories that you want to hear from his life on the road. Welcome, brother. Thanks for the invitation. This is so good. Um, we just finished uh, Moon Landing uh, in New Mexico. Shout out Josiah and the Journal of Lost Time for putting on yet another absolutely incredible event. Um, I think he, you know, easily the largest event he's ever put on, 400 rigs. Man, uh, so impressive. I was fortunate to be there uh, leading an insanely talented group of photographers and videographers and cannot wait to, uh, to share the images we captured there and met this guy uh, at Moon Landing and, you know, captured him taking photographs as well. And that's how we, uh, we met. So, yeah. Right. Just got a, just got a Canon. That's awesome. Yeah. I really like, um, I like learning. Yeah, and of course, man. That's just one cool passion to have when you travel. You know, when you yeah. go so many cool places, it's. 100%. Uh, I kind of want to capture some images. Yeah, yeah bring it home. And you've got some skills, so it, it's uh, it's impressive. Appreciate so, that. Yeah, of course. So as we always start the show, um, tell us who you are, where you're from, and how long you've been on the road, and anywhere in between all of that, you can shamelessly promote yourself. So tell people where people can find you, Instagram, whatever. Yeah. So. Well, I grew up in Maine. I lived there for 18 years. Uh, after that, I joined the Army. Tell us who you are first. Uh, Brandon Roberts. <laughs> yep, I'm Brandon. Uh, my tag on IG is Real Zydex. Um, kind yeah. of a funny name. I, my favorite video game of all time is Final Fantasy IX. And there's the main character, Zidane. Okay. Shout out to the gamers if you are <laughs> aware of the game. But um, I was like, I don't know. It just came to me like just playing games and I was like what do I put as my gamer tag yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a funny process you know there you go and then I just was like I'm gonna make it an abbreviation I guess of that Perfect. um but I joined the army when I was 19 okay I was stationed in Fort Bragg North Carolina you said you were from Connecticut originally Maine Maine okay. yep Maine okay um yep and then um that brought me to the Carolinas yep I know Fort Bragg I lived in Durham for a long time oh nice so, right outside of Raleigh yeah, yep I know the area well Yep. So yeah, Fayetteville is not as nice as uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fayetteville is not as nice as Raleigh or Durham. Yeah. But you know, it is. It is what it is. Yeah. Nice state. Yeah. It's a nice state. Yeah. Um. So I met a girl actually in Myrtle Beach when I was stationed in um, Fort Bragg. Okay. And I had the choice: go back home to Maine mm -hmm. or move to Myrtle Beach with her. Okay. Chose Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and started uh, going to school there. Got my degree in business and accounting. Um. Yeah, so I've always lived kind of a pretty simple life. Yeah. And, yeah, we'll go into that in yeah, the we'll, questions. <laughs> we'll get into that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so you joined the Army when you were 18, you said? Yep. How old are you now? I'm 30. Okay. So, you know, early on in your life, the Army, I'm sure, you know, took you certain places. Or, or were yep. you always stationed at Fort Bragg? I was Did actually, get, I never deployed. Okay. Yeah, I was... Um, I was in the GRF unit of the 82nd Airborne. Okay. And that just means global readiness force. Sure. So when the earthquake struck struck Haiti, yep. for example, my unit went. Okay. There was some issues going around Syria in 2013. Uh -huh. My unit almost went there. Okay. While the other brigades deployed sure. to Iraq, Afghanistan. Sure, sure, sure. We just trained a lot and okay. was kind of like the global cops on... On ready. Yeah, gotcha. exactly. Okay. Um, let's learn a bit about your life on the road. Uh, question one, what was the beginning moment, cause, or inspiration to live your life on the road? <laughs> well, 
Shout out to... The... Actually, I don't think you said how long you've been on the road. Oh, right. Yeah, I've, um, I'm actually brand new. It was... Uh, I f- <laughs> Someone told me I need to find my anniversary date. Okay. Yes, and you should I... know that day. Uh-huh. Yes. And I found... I scrubbed through some of my bank statements like, okay, yeah. here and then Tennessee. Okay, that's when I filled up for gas. Yeah. Uh, so that was... That was... I don't want to get it wrong. August 14th. Okay. So like two months. So two months. Right, Jeez. Okay. Right around. You're brand new. Brand new. Okay. <laughs> I love it. So what was the what was the reason? What was the beginning moment cause or inspiration to start your life on the road? Well, first of all, I didn't even know this stuff existed <laughs> until like okay. about two and a half years ago. Okay. A guy named, shout out to the fine print, Trent. I watched a video of him making macaroni and cheese and brownies in a national forest okay. in his van. Yeah. And that was in 2020, right around COVID. And I'm like, wait a minute. And he, he, I started following him because I'm a gamer. Yeah. And I was like, wait, you can play video games in the woods <laughs> and make mac and cheese. And it just looks so cozy. Yeah. He's really good at uh, videography. Yep. Yep. I know um, he is. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Cody yep. too. Uh, but um, yeah, the fine print. I, I saw his video making brownies and macaroni in the woods and... I just thought it was so different, so unique. Yeah. And I, (laughs) that was 100% the inspo. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, so that was 2020 though. Yep. And, you know, you didn't get in your van until this past summer, you know, two months ago. So what was that process like of going, okay, this is what I want to do. I'm inspired by this. And then how long and what was that process like to get to the point where you finally got a rig? Yeah. Well, I'm six, I'm almost six, four. Yep. And so that just kind of brought... The Ford Transit was really your only option. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Basically the high roof Ford Transit. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. So I, I basically was doing about a year and a half of... Yeah. You just stood in Althea and you, I think you had like a half inch of clearance. Yeah. If I didn't like, have my flip flops on and I think I was on your rug, yep. I would have easily been able easily to Easily like, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think so too. So the like Mercedes is possible. It's possible, but it is tight. It's really like, tight. You have to be so intentional. Yeah. I tell anybody over 6'2", I'm like, the Ford Transit high roof is really like your best bet. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, you can fit in a Mercedes, but like, yeah. you can't fit in a Promaster. Yeah. Not with you a hat know, on. Not with a hat <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> you know? Or any type of shoes yeah. on whatsoever. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that was, you know, your height, obviously, being first yep. and foremost. Yeah, just 18 months of planning. I was looking through Van Life Trader. Okay. Um, I, I knew what my budget was. Yep. I was still working as a property manager. Okay. And um, we'll get into that one later. Yeah. Uh, and I just, um, yeah, just 18 months of planning. I okay. knew what I wanted. I had a checklist of, and this would be my advice for anybody kind of looking to get into this yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, of course have a checklist at least what i did was um i just wrote things i needed things i wanted yep and the height thing was a need at first yeah but it was so hard to find i bounced it down to a want interesting okay yeah i was like i have to sacrifice okay the height Hmm. um but luckily i found this guy okay and i forget if that's a new that's a future question it is a future okay yeah we'll talk about the rig yep um no, I think that's interesting, and I actually think it's a really wise piece of advice and, you know, something we can talk about further, but, you know, creating a list of, like, the things that you absolutely can't live without, yeah. and then understanding that, you know, there's a lot of things that you're going to want that you're yeah. just not going to be able to get. And it's like, your first rig. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, you you go on the road, have space yeah. um, for uh, an improvement that you want later. Of course. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, and we say it all the time, like, on the show is you don't have to have a perfectly built out rig. Yeah. You know, I've been, you know, doing space planning and interior design for almost 20 years. I knew exactly what I wanted to design and build. A lot of people don't have that foresight and yeah. or knowledge. And so until they do it. Yeah. Until they actually get on the road and really experience what it actually is like to live in a rig, uh, what it's actually like to live day to day. What is their, you know, mornings look like? What are their evenings yeah. look like? And you can adjust things like, yep. you know, actually, I think it's a really great piece of advice is go more minimal yeah, definitely. and then slowly add to it. Yep. You know, after maybe a couple months on the road, take a long road trip, maybe it's a month and just test things out. Yep. So, you know, I think, no, I think you, uh, you did it really wisely in a sense that took your time, you know, ultimately found the exact rig you wanted, yep. the high roof. Take your time. Um, yeah. Don't just force it. Yeah. Especially if, cause for me. I, I got a pretty bougie rig. Yeah. Uh, it was already built out. Okay. We'll, we'll go into that later. Yeah, yeah. 
But um, yeah, it, it, I would say rent a minivan, put a freaking mattress in it yeah. and a pillow yeah, yeah. and see if you like it Yeah, exactly. before dropping X amount yeah, on something on big. something like that. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Um, question two, and obviously we just came from a massive van event. Uh, what has been your experience with other nomadic travelers while living your life on the road? Oh, man. Well, I tell people this and they laugh at me. If you, if you have met me at an event, at least this is what people have told me, I'm very extroverted. Sure. And I don't think I ever have been until this lifestyle. Okay. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and I think I like the, that. Yeah. I think the reason for that is, is I just feel like I finally found my group of humans okay. that I can like be myself around. Sure. So meeting other nomadic people that live this same lifestyle is just given me the ability to just kind of be myself and sure. learn who I am. Yeah. And traveling so much. I've never traveled to. Okay. I grew up uh, really, really poor. We never really prioritized travel. Okay. And now that I am, I'm just, you know learning and meeting all these people and I, it's funny because doing 18 months of research i you hear frequent things from fellow van lifers sure and one thing is the loneliness that <laughs> is that comes with it yep well not to minimize the loneliness some people feel mm -hmm. i feel like i've been more social in the last two months of than course. in the last 20 years of my life yeah but it is because i have gone to events yeah and have met people well and again like you know that topic of loneliness comes up quite a bit on the show and quite a bit in van life in general or nomadic travel in general. And you'll experience that, you know, like, Oh yeah. You know, it will come. I will just, I will tell you that It'll right come. now. And, <clears throat> but I, 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 I love the fact that you've recognized that and you've paid attention to that, you know, knowing that that is something that, um, you know, others and or yourself will eventually deal yeah. with. And so pretty inevitable, but at the end of the day too, I think it's pretty amazing that like, you know, you said, you know, you've been a quote unquote introvert most of your life. And this is the first opportunity you really yeah. felt extroverted in any way, shape or form. So yeah. I think it's pretty cool. I just feel like, you know, these events, you're just allowed to be who you are. Yeah, exactly. And and it's encouraged because, yeah. because once you are, once you, once you are ashamed, unashamed to be who you are, yeah. then you'll really find your group of people. Yeah, exactly. If you kind of fake it then yeah. you're really not going to find your little tribe, you yeah, know? for sure. No, most definitely. And yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, nomadic life or nomadic travel allows you to really discover a lot about yourself personally, yeah. um, really look internally. Um, and, you know, ultimately get to that, you know, point where you're like, this is who I am, yeah. you know, and, and, and be proud of that. And yeah. I think that's pretty amazing. And to, to see that you've realized that early on in your travels, it's pretty awesome. I yeah. think it's going to just, you know, only only get better from here. So. Yeah. I was thrusted into it. I mean, I... What was your first, like, when you got on the road, where did you pick up the van? Where did you buy the rig? Yeah, so I actually flew into Colorado, mm -hmm. and I drove it all the way back to the beach because it was... Okay. Well, it's kind of a future question, but it was already built out. Yeah, yeah. And then I just kind of made upgrades... Made some tweaks. At the beach. Yeah, and yeah. And then... Went on the road. Okay. Yep. Did you go west immediately? Yep. I went west to descend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, descend was that your first event. Was like a, Holy shit. That was like a 30-something, I think a 40-hour drive. You from... drove from Myrtle Beach to Bend, <laughs> Oregon, and descend was your first van event? Yep. The first, like, three weeks of your life on the road was? First, like, so I left it on the 14th. The, the first two weeks. Yep. Exactly. Good, good Lord. Yeah, um, I was talk, thrown into it. Talk about a van life introduction or a <laughs> yeah. nomadic travel introduction. Yep. Kudos to you. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. um, question three, what has been your biggest failure? What has been your biggest triumph on your short time on the road? Hmm. I would say my biggest failure is I wasn't really encouraged or supported okay. in this decision. Okay. From your family? Yeah, from okay. friends and family. Okay. So... Man, I kind of have a tendency to kind of shut down. Sure. With strong criticism, especially after okay. the event has taken place. Okay. Like, I understand if someone was like, hey, this might not be a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to tell you after you make the investment yeah. and the change, I kind of, um, 
I kind of shut out some of my friends and family. Second guess yourself a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be my biggest failure so far is since I'm full time. Sure. I didn't tend to some of those relationships. Okay. And I kind of burned them. Okay. But, you know, we can always return. Sure. And I'm going to, I'm going to work on that. Okay. Sure. I mean, I give you credit for, you know, recognizing that. I think that's Mm -hmm. a huge thing. Um, You know, it's sometimes not easy to branch into this lifestyle or, or take that first step. It's actually often talked about is like, you know, people's most common advice on this show is just to take that first step. So, you know, proud of you for being able to do that, but you know, recognizing the fact that you might have hurt some people along the way. Yeah. That's a, that's a pretty mature thing. So, yeah. yeah. I didn't really understand. And yeah, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to understand, you know, wanting to live in what is this yeah. couple square feet, you know, what 100%. 50 to 80, yeah. whatever your rig is. Yep, exactly. <laughs> it's a small space. Yeah. And, and it's hard to get people that have no concept of what this lifestyle is like. It's yeah. really hard to like verbally explain yep. it to them until they actually come out and see what it's actually like. Yep. So that'd be my biggest failure was, okay. um, just not, uh, tending to those relationships, yeah. not being more patient with mm. their understanding of mm. my choice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then your biggest triumph. I would say my biggest triumph. Hmm. So many, I would say just finally pulling the trigger yeah. on, on starting. On <laughs> yeah. This is Cody. He's oh, he's, he's my van dog. Oh, one of them. Good boy. Yes, I know. This this does I help know. with the loneliness, you know. Thank you. I know. Thank uh, two big complaints would be loneliness and security. Yeah. Well, Nina, I've yeah. got these, I've, these, these two crazy <laughs> pups are are definitely security for sure, mm-hmm. and and can also handle and loneliness. companionship. Exactly. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. But my biggest victory, I would say, would be to just have done it. I did so much planning okay. and so much second guessing, like you were saying earlier, yeah, yeah. so much doubt, you know, you're not going to meet anybody. You're yeah. going to be lonely. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be awful. Yeah. It's going to be a worst investment of your, of your life. Yeah. And my victory would be to, to just have done it. And I have met the most amazing people. Yeah. That's and awesome. we, we create such serious bonds so quickly because yeah. our kitchens are, 10 feet apart yeah, yeah. so when we're cooking we just share meals all the time yeah our living rooms are, are just as close yeah. so yeah we share our interests yeah. just as equally yeah yeah no i think that's amazing mm-hmm. um question four did you start your life on the road as a single person what is it like living your life on the road as a single person <sighs> yep i'm single um i travel solo i've always kind of been a loner okay um so that it wasn't really a challenge sure Really, the challenge for me is sticking with a caravan. Okay. Because I really love to just kind of be by myself and reflect. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah. And honestly, the road is that's something that, you know, a lot of nomadic travelers start their life on the road because they want that solitude. Mm-hmm. They want that self discovery. They yeah. want that opportunity to kind of look inward. Um, so, yeah, no, I think, you know, being thrust into the the forefront of things. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, you know, at Descend and like that being your first event, you know, one of the biggest events in the van community. Yeah. Um, yeah. You could quickly turn and be like, I need some downtime. Yeah. I need some alone time. Yeah. So yeah, I get it. And you can um, kind of like hurt people's feelings if, oh, if they don't understand your personality yet, you know? Yeah, of course. But it, I mean, that goes without saying it kind of with anybody, but at the same time, like, <laughs> The idea of just like, you know, um, you know, being on the road by yourself, I live on the road by myself, um, you know, and, and you find that solitude and you enjoy that solitude. Yeah. So I get it. Uh, question five, what's the best place, craziest location you've had sex during your life on the road? Craziest <laughs> place I've had sex on the road. Cody, you Cody, 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 <laughs> Cody, 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 off. Um, yeah, I would say... I've met a lot of people and I try to just network at events. Yeah. I try to keep it more uh connection in in a in a non-sexual way. Yeah, of course. Where's your where's like the place though? Like one location you're like, "Oh, this was epic." Hmm. 
lake that you've traveled to? Just not. I haven't. No, haven't. Yeah. Yet. And that's good. Like, you've only been on the road a few months. Yeah. Like, it is what it is. Like, I'm, I'm interested in it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Touche. Uh, I mean, I get it. I'm but down. Trust me. <laughs> there's going to be some, they're going to have some opportunities down the road. And mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, Cody, National Cody, Parks. <laughs> Cody, buddy. Come here, buddy. That's awesome. You're just a big van cat. I know. It's awesome. I love it. You're a good boy. Um, Go play. Go go in your bed. Question six is uh, how do you make money while living your life on the road? So I am ultra fortunate in the fact that I pretty much burned my 20s away. Okay. Working. Yep. And saving up. Yeah. And creating um, the ability to just reduce expenses. Yeah. So that I actually, I'm um, not working. I'm yeah. I'm a I'm a student at Full Sail University in Florida. Okay. And it's, the military pays me a, a small amount. Sure. To go to, to school. To be a student. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. So my my I have no debt. Yeah. My my bills are really low. Yeah. And um. Yeah, I I have a very similar situation. I mean, I worked really hard my 20s and 30s. I didn't get into the nomadic community until my 40s, and so you know I. I worked professionally as a landscape architect for almost 20 years of my life and busted my ass and, and, and worked and saved and had opportunities and, you know, and find myself extremely fortunate to be in the situation that I am, that I can do what I have and build out the, uh, the way I wanted to. And, um, so I can relate to that and, and can very much appreciate that. So, you know, now I'm able to, I've got some advice from, from people over the past of, Trying not to mix passion with income, sure, in a way, and and you know, there's a there's an equally powerful op- opinion that maybe that is the best way to make yeah. income. Yeah. Um, but for me, I'm I love the fact that I'm able to study mm-hmm. photography and videography, mm-hmm. and to do so without that lingering. This has to be beneficial monetarily one day. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, no, and again, like I actually am in the camp of like taking your passions and turn them in, mm-hmm. turning them into some type of monetary opportunity. Um, yeah, do what you love. Yeah, do you mm-hmm. love. A hundred percent. It's how I've lived my life the last five years. Um, and, and honestly, like, and it doesn't have to be like a crazy, insane career. Like you can take little bits and pieces of it. I've turned, you know, two or three projects into small little revenue streams. Yeah. And I think, you know, where you're at with photography and your passion for photography, you obviously have a good eye. You know, you can take a frame. Um, and, and the fact that you want to continue to learn, I think, you know, is only going to be a crazy opportunity for you down the road, um, to, you know, take that and really like decide if this is what you want to become your profession. Yeah. And do I want to then really push and try and make money with the camera in my hand, you know, which again, you know, the few frames I saw you took at me landing, you got skills and you can, you know, you're, you want to learn and, and that's the best part. And once you do that. Right. Yeah. Right down. There you go. Um, you know, once you get to that part, then, you know, the rest is pretty easy. The yeah. rest is just hard work. The rest yeah. is just, you know, making contacts and connections yeah. and, and putting yourself out there. I mean, I didn't start my photography career until COVID, right before COVID, actually. Um, I took a photograph every day of 2019, and I built a website in 2020 and just started throwing myself out there. Nice. I've been taking pictures all of my life since yeah. I was a kid. But I had wondered if I could do it professionally. Yeah. And, you know, my first photography job was a, uh, was a sushi restaurant in Seattle. Like, I'd never shot food photography in my life. Oh, nice. But, like, figured it out. Yeah. Created some beautiful images. Yeah. The client was super happy. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. First gig was yeah, a success. Gig. Yeah. I mean. Nice. Like, but it was like that opportunity of, like, oh, this person wants to pay me to take some images. I'm yeah. on board. Let's yeah. go. Let's figure it out. So, you'll get there. Yeah. You'll definitely get there. Yeah. My, I really like the video aspect of it. Sure. Uh, it, and, um, I just being at Descend Mm -hmm. and seeing some amazing artists, Mm -hmm. shout out, you know, Marty, Marty, rubber tree. Uh, there's so many that I really can't think of off the top of my head. They're just so talented and I want to make free music videos for nomads. I think it's amazing. (laughs) I love, like you, you mentioned this to the, this to me earlier today and I thought it was a great idea. Um. One, it'll combine your passion for, you know, video and photography and it'll teach you along the way. And, yeah. and I think it's also a, an opportunity, like you said, to give back to the community in some form. Yeah. So I think it's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's the reason why, to be honest, why I started this show was I knew nothing about video 
And this was going to be an opportunity for me to tell other nomad stories, um, to provide some information to people that wanted to or was curious about van life. But then also teach me how to edit a video. Yeah. Teach me how to do audio. Teach me how to, you know, put something in DaVinci and, and, and push out a finished product. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's a great idea. So, yeah. Yeah, just to be versatile. Yeah. In your, well, yeah. you know, follow your passion, but then, you know, stick with the things you're good at. Yeah. Or, or like within your field, continue to learn within your field. Yeah. Which, you know, you, you kind of have that eye and, and that objective. You think so? Awesome. Yes. I, mean, I, I just want to. <coughs> I do. Like, <laughs> looking at your frames from, from uh, moon landing, yeah, you can take a photo. Like, you have the ability to do so. So, yeah, you're, you're, and you're going to school for it, which is going to be even better. Yeah. Like, which is, you know, most photographers don't go to school for it, mm-hmm. aren't trained, uh, and you're going to get all of that in school, which kudos to you, I think, is a great thing. So, yeah. um, question seven, what is your rig? Who built it? Why did you choose it to live your life on the road? So, I am in a 2022 extended high top Ford Transit. I'm not, I think the builder was simply tiny. Okay. They don't make any more vans anymore. They're okay. into um, tiny homes. Okay. They're based out of Colorado. Okay. Um, and it was actually pretty much built when I bought it mm-hmm. because I bought it from these weekenders in Colorado. Okay. Cool. Family of four. Sweet. Husband, wife, two boys. They had two seats in the back. Yeah. I took that out, put that as a workspace, mm-hmm. made an upgrade to the electrical system. Sure. I, uh, I added the air conditioner for the dogs, which leaks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got to fix that. Yep. You know the deal. Yep. Stuff breaks. Stuff breaks. Um, exactly. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, but it was pretty much kind of, was the solar on, was the electrical like as it was when you purchased it? Uh, I pretty much doubled the power. Okay. Okay. Uh, it was batteries and solar. Yep. Okay. There were 300 amp hour batteries, okay. 300 watts of solar. I added. I basically am the guy that the electrical system. I think Dakota Battery. He okay. gave a speech at one of the events. He's uh-huh. like, "Don't do these things." And you did those things. I am like the poster <laughs> child. <that> guy. <laughs> Fair enough. But it works perfectly for me. Okay. I don't even have a DC to DC battery charger. Sure, sure, sure. And my 600 watts on the roof. I'm usually topped off 800 amp hours. Okay. Big energy batteries. Okay. Two 400 amp hour batteries. There you go. I love that. That's amazing. Uh huh. Always good to hear that. What's your <laughs> inverter? 3000 watt. Okay. 12 volt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I mean, mm-hmm. if you're gaming, 100 percent. That you know that mm-hmm. amount of power. You're running a Starlink. We see that over here. Yep. So, um, you know all the things. So, and I'm really glad that you waited and got a Ford Transit high roof because, yeah. like, for you, it is going to be the most comfortable van yeah. on the road. For you specifically being six floor, yeah. like there's like you would have been, you would have felt really tight in Althea. You would have felt really tight in God. You wouldn't even have fit a pro master. <laughs> Not even. So like you know the high roof for transit is yep. easily the 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 best height rig on the road. Yeah. You know minus uh, you know the Unimogs that we saw and yeah and, yeah and those exactly types of things those you are know, crazy box trucks whatever but yeah um, you know but if you're gonna buy a van. That's the van if yeah. you're six two or over. To Cust- buy. Customize it to your body. Yeah. Don't course. don't rush. Yeah, yeah. If you're a tall dude, yeah, be patient. If you're super tall, yeah. You you're... gotta wait. <laughs> if you're super tall, you gotta wait or find a really unique van. Yeah. Um, but from a van perspective, yeah, the Ford Transit High Roof is really the only mm-hmm. way to go. And, and the cool thing is, is there's a lot of misconceptions about the transit bed. Sure. Uh I I'm not sure, but I heard that the transit might be a little bit less wide than the ProMaster. Uh, that could be, yes. It, the the ProMaster is the widest van uh-huh. on the road, correct. Well, um... Interior-wise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I heard a lot of people doing my research that yeah. you need to put your bed oh, long ways. What's so interesting is I just realized you don't have any flares. And, so it, and it's sideways. You sleep this way? Yeah. No and it, it, effing way. Yeah, it's so crazy. I'll show you, yeah. Okay, after this episode, mm-hmm. we're going to go look and I'm going to test this out. Maybe we'll put a little, <laughs> maybe I'll take my phone and we'll do a little video cut yeah. that I do. No fucking way. Yeah, That's... it's so, it blew my mind when uh, when okay. I asked the guy. I was like, because cause basically the builder sacrificed insulation yeah, yeah, yeah. on that part. Which, you know, yep. good, bad, or indifferent. Mm-hmm. But, I, okay, we're going to test this out. I'm, now I'm really curious. Yeah. Because I have flares on mine. Shit, I'm only 5'10". And I can sleep just barely yeah. left to right, side to side, uh, or east west in, in my bed. Uh, like <laughs> it's cool, man. Okay. A lot I of people I, I tell people that have 
built vans. Yeah. And they're like, no way. I know. I'm, <laughs> I've seen a lot of builds and I'm staring at your rig right now mm-hmm. going, no fucking way. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to test this out. Mm-hmm. Uh, question eight. What is your best bathroom? Number one, number, number two story from Life on the Road. Hmm. First of all, do we have a toilet in the rig? No toilet. No toilet in the rig. I yeah. actually just watched you take that shovel and go yep. take a poke. Just somewhere that way. Exactly. It's... Um, okay. <laughs> so, so what's what? Any crazy stories from oh. your two months on the road? Well, being in the army, you know, I'm not a stranger to pooping in the woods. We did a lot of training out there. Touche. Um, my best story. Well, first I'll say. I love pit toilets. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. I like them more than porter potties and I like them more than like a planet fitness, you yeah. know? Yeah. The noises you hear from sometimes <laughs> in the bathrooms are <laughs> kind of distracting. <laughs> but when like just now the view, yeah, I mean, obviously we're here in Flagstaff, Arizona. I mean, the views around us are epic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's a very cool feeling. Yeah. To just dig a whole squat down and yeah. cover it up. Yeah. And you with know, the view, man. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna put in the show notes a link to how to poop in nature. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it's with one, video. I'm well, <laughs> just kidding. With well, the key is just like people, there are people that don't know how to poop in nature. Mm-hmm. And honestly, human feces has been a big problem in some of the more heavily populated van areas. Yeah. Five twenty five got shut down a year and a half ago or a year ago, or parts of it. And we actually spoke with one of the Forest Service Rangers there, and he said, "You know what? This was one of the, the one of the causes. Yeah. You know, it was one of the things. There was a number of them that he was like we referenced that was like a problem. Yeah. You know, people not digging a, a, a deep enough hole. Yeah, you know, human feces being very shallow on the surface, yeah. and it just you know, for dogs, for yeah. humans, for it's just not healthy. Yeah, and so yeah, dig an eight inch hole. At you least, know, yeah. recommended says six, but yeah. fucking dig an eight inch hole. Yeah. like and." cover it make sure it's like completely like you know pack it down yeah exactly so um do you have a desire to put a toilet in the rig ah let me think well it kind of ties into something else i used to have ibs okay so if you have uh an issue with your yeah digestive tract yeah um you're gonna need an emergency (laughs) emergency pooper in the rig Yeah, yeah yeah but luckily I changed my diet before. Another piece of advice okay. is uh, I just simplified my diet before coming in. Interesting. And I love to cook. Yeah, yeah. So it was hard for me. Okay. But I'm on a really, I'm not on a super strict diet or a super strict timing. Sure. But I am uh, cognizant and aware of it. Yeah, you're aware of your own yep. eating habits and how your body responds. So now yeah. I can plan around that. Sure. I okay. poop one time a day, super healthy. Yeah. yeah around the same time i love it and That's i can awesome. kind of but you know, it still doesn't change the fact uh, do you do you desire to have the ability to go to the bathroom in the rig i'm a wild man i love I it i love being out in the woods <laughs> i love it that's perfect that's <laughs> and perfect. if you're traveling you're gassing up anyway yeah. every few hours so you're gonna find a convenience store mm-hmm. if you have to or whatever so for Makes- me non-essential not a big for deal. some of you yeah maybe make the decision yeah 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 i mean i wanted a composting toilet from the start mm-hmm. like that was a big deal for me um and i love my composting toilet everybody on the show knows this <laughs> yeah I, I, it would be so nice i shout it from the rooftops yeah. it would be nice yeah but i'm like but it's expensive yeah the, it's expensive. The, i'm the like composting. where am i gonna put it yeah that's the other thing is where do you put it yeah i got 150 pound of dog <laughs> you do you have two <laughs> massive puppy dogs that, uh-huh. yeah are not small so yeah i get it i could add you know you have the you have your little bench yep. right near the door yeah right where yours is yep. i could add one you could you but could. then um it would because they yeah, don't sleep in the up, bed it takes up their space yeah so yeah i get it and cody's older so yeah you need some space we'll see uh, <laughs> question nine what has been the happiest what has been the hardest moments of living your life on the road the happiest moment Hmm. I would say I was at Descend, honeymoon phase. Okay, yeah. Obviously, you're three weeks in, two weeks in. No mechanical issues happened. Yeah. There were no issues at all. Yeah. It was, everything was new. Yeah. And driving through, or when I I purchased my ticket to Descend, Mm -hmm. I saw, you know, humans being. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's a cool little phrase. Yeah. Didn't really know what it meant. Yeah. And then I'm at Descend. A little bit of mushrooms in my system <laughs> and I'm one wheeling around and I'm just seeing 
so many different people with so many different interests. Yeah. And they were, humans were just being. Yeah. And I realized that in that moment, I found my group of yeah. neurodivergence <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. Like you were at your spot. I like found is, my people. Yeah, exactly. I found my tribe, you That's know? Awesome. I'm, I'm super happy to hear that. Like, um, one, descent can be very overwhelming. Yeah. And, you know, to you to, you know, shout out and to you to kind of like make that leap and, and take that plunge. I think it's really cool, but then also to get there and then just kind of like take that broad perspective and, and really kind of widen out your view and just be yeah. like, look at how amazing this really is. Yeah. You know, so, um, and you know what, to be honest, like I'm going to, I have not been, I was not in the military. I worked professionally right out of college and I'm going to guess your military background has given you, you know, that wide perspective. Yeah. Like, you know, the, whether you know it or not, I don't know if that's true, but that's just kind of what my gut thinks yeah you know but like you know uh, you go to an environment like the send with 15 other rigs 15 other rigs yeah and you know thousands of people yeah um and you're able to kind of like sit back and and look at it from the big picture i think that's pretty pretty cool so yeah yeah, yeah you know us on the road full timers we share a lot of the a lot of similar victories yeah and a lot of similar challenges yeah for sure and we, we bond so quickly over those things yeah and it's the same thing in the military. Yeah, imagine. I imagine uh -huh. that to be very true. Yeah. But, uh, oh, man. <laughs> That's cool. It's just so wonderful to just be around. That would be, it was, you said high point? Uh, happiest and hardest. Happiest. So what's, is... the, what's then the, the hardest moment of living your life on the road? So, <sighs> so I'm really lucky. I've got a 2022 transit. Mm -hmm. I haven't had any mechanical issues. Okay. So I'm really thankful for that. It's coming. It's coming for sure. I've gone some gnarly places <laughs> yeah. where I probably shouldn't have. Okay, fair. <laughs> and Something's going to break eventually. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. my lowest moment would probably be, I would say, I would say coming from descend, being on that ultra stimuli. That big high. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a hard one. And then leaving that, yeah, 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 I was like, okay, I'm like two weeks in. Yeah, descend just ended. I met the most beautiful people. Yeah. on the planet. Yeah, there. but now you're alone. And now I'm alone, <laughs> like trying to understand. Okay, these events don't happen every month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they can. They so, can. Yeah, you gotta chase them. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta search for them. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and they're all not gonna be the same. They're all not descends. So yeah. I guess there was a, a little bit of just overload on emotion of like, mm -hmm. what am I doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now what? Why am I <laughs> yeah. living in a little van? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I guess that was a low moment. Just followed the high because yeah. I'm just kind of, um, maybe there was a little bit of second, second guessing. Of course. In the moment, yeah. Yeah, man. Absolutely. And that's not going to stop. Let me tell you, I've been yeah. on the road a year and a half and you're going to go through those up and ups and downs all the time like that's going to happen quite a bit so you know you you know escaping a little bit obviously you went to moon landing you came here post moon landing you know you're with just a few friends uh kind of decompressing i think yeah. that's a really great way to kind of do it and yeah so you know that's going to come it's going to happen like everybody goes to those events those big events and everybody always talks about like man i need to like go be alone yeah. for a minute you know like it's a lot of stimulus yeah. you know for five days four days yeah well th so. thankfully i i've been asking some people at moon landing like yeah. what their squasher is yeah, yeah, yeah everybody has like an internal squasher what, yeah. what that means is is if chad you say you know <laughs> cody go lay down buddy <laughs> go lay down it's fine um i would say you know I took great pictures this weekend yeah and then i would have a bad squasher that squashed those good thoughts okay I have, I'm really lucky in that I have a good squasher that if I do have a bad thought, mm. then it's usually kind of squashed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that idea. That's yeah, yeah. awesome. And I don't know if it's trained or if it's <laughs> what you have when you're born. Yeah. But um, thankfully, I'll get in that moment, that mode of kind of regret, sadness, yeah. or yeah. Kind, yeah. Of, kind of lost. Yeah, feeling. yeah. That but down then it, moment. But then it's lost and, or then it's squashed and then I'm like, okay. I have ADHD really bad, so it's like, okay, find a new hobby. Yeah, yeah And then okay. that's when I uh, started thinking 
I can make videos for yeah, people. Yeah, 100%. I love <laughs> your thought. Down, bud. I love your thought. Um, last <laughs> question, down. question 10. Uh, find hashtag van life in your own words mm. and provide a piece of advice for somebody wanting to live a life on the road. Hashtag van life to me is living simply. It's very, it's kind of a, it's kind of opposite, but I'm living so simply, Sure. but I'm living so large. Okay. I drove through the redwoods and I just started yeah. crying at the yeah. beauty of it. You know, yeah. <laughs> never, never traveled. Like I said, so van life is just to me living simply trying to live closely with nature yeah and trying to be part of that regenerative cycle <laughs> cody likes to I eat know, flies. This flies that's a huge fly i can see his <laughs> eyes like just literally light up yeah living simply and living closely with nature and trying to be part of that positive cycle that nature brings trying to break down the barriers okay. between me and nature okay you know okay my I backyard's like always somewhere exotic yeah, yeah yeah somewhere beautiful pretty much yeah, yeah for sure sometimes you know truck stops when you when you <laughs> when you have to yeah 100 yeah. percent. but that's it for me man i want to okay. i want to break down the barriers i have between me and nature and yeah. um well and to your point i think you're using it as an opportunity to see some places that you've never seen before mm -hmm. and that was my impetus to get on the road was like i want to go places that i've never experienced yeah you know i want to see the you know montana canada border yeah and i want to see you know what that area is like yeah I want to go to some places that I've never been and experienced and mm -hmm. been fortunate to do so in the van and you'll get there too. So yeah, I think it's awesome. Um, a piece of advice for somebody wanting to live on the road. <sighs> hmm. going to try to say something that isn't said frequently, but it's pretty hard. You know, everybody has tried, but everybody <laughs> says the same thing. So hmm. it's all good. Just, you know, say what your gut tells you. I would say this lifestyle really isn't for everybody okay i um, love that full time yeah. yeah yeah i would say it's really not for everybody but if you are watching this it's probably for you it's in the realm <laughs> it's yeah. in the realm yeah there's a possibility uh -huh. that this could be for you yeah. so i would say learn who you are learn if it's if it's possible, if you would be comfortable in it, because, man, I know I'm new. I know it's honeymoon phase okay. probably still. It's okay. But this is, without a doubt, the greatest thing I've ever done. There you go. I've that. met people that understand me, that don't judge me, yeah. that don't tell me I'm doing things wrong. Mm -hmm. I just meet people that think like I do. Yeah. We want to live minimally. Yeah. We want to live in unity. Mm -hmm. We want to live in harmony with nature. And I have grown so much in the last two months, thankfully, thankfully to Emily, Walker, Ava, yeah. um, so friends, many people. So many people that you've met. And I feel like a good friend of mine, Tom, he did the um, survival class at okay. Northwest Nomads, if you attended. He gave me the, an illustration of like memories per minute. Mm -hmm. And back in my 20s, I would kind of, it would be June. And I'm like, Christmas was last week. Yeah, yeah. We're already in June. And then December came and I'm like, where did summer go? It yeah, blew yeah. by so fast. Yeah. And that's because I had low memories per minute. I was doing kind of the same thing every day. Okay. Now, if you were to tell me that I went to descend two months-ish ago, yeah. I would tell you you're lying. Yeah, that yeah. was like four years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've lived so many yeah. different memories between then and now. Yeah, you're living very much every moment, day mm -hmm. to day, and very intentionally. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. And that's what this lifestyle will do to you. So. so that ties in with my advice of journal. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Journal these moments. Okay. Journal these memories. Okay. Do some self-reflection. I like that. Uh, I like that a lot. And I'm kind of bad at that, but I'm, I'm, I'm striving to do one page a day. Okay. <laughs> No, that's amazing. I love it. Um, well, those are your 10 questions, man. Super yeah. easy. It's a, it's the most, I could net, I thought I talked about this to a friend, uh, at Northwest uh -huh. Nomads and I was thinking, how could I ever return? <laughs> it would be, it's going to yeah. be hard. It would be very difficult. Yeah. I agree with you. I'm in the same boat. Yeah. Like now having been on the road a year and a half, like 
I don't see myself ever being somewhat nomadic for the rest of my life. At least yeah. six months of the year. Correct. Yeah, I'll always have a rig in my life, mm -hmm. no matter what. Um, whether it's, you know, I have a home base or whatever, but I'll always adventure out in a vehicle of some kind. Yeah, you kind of get, like, accustomed to change. Yeah. And, man, it's so... It's I used to hate driving. <laughs> and now I'm like, I get on the road, I'm like, this is the best. Where are we going yeah, next? Yeah, exactly. I can't wait to change my backyard. I love that. I man. can't wait to meet somebody new. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. um, well, those are your 10 questions. We're going to go enjoy the rest of this day. Actually, we're going to film Emily mm -hmm. uh, coming up next. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, we just left, obviously, Moon Landing. I'm going to give myself a little shout out here. Um, I just launched I live in a van.com. And I live in a, so please go check out I live in a rig on Instagram and I live in a van.com, uh, home of the nomadic community. You can get all the latest information of what's going on in the community and hopefully learn a little bit more about what we do and how we live. Um, so much more coming. I can't wait to share more in the future. Um, it's a project of mine I've been working on for a very long time. So excited to share it with everybody else. So. Uh, yeah. So thank you for watching the show. Please like, and subscribe and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. <laughs>